By now, if you follow my page, you already know that I have schizophrenia. You've probably even heard me talk about being an addict. What you might not know is that I'm also a felon. You probably saw my mugshot in the thumbnail. Now that I'm growing on YouTube, I thought it would be a good time to talk about my criminal record. Because I've talked about it on TikTok, but because of the way the algorithm works, unless I'm making videos about schizophrenia, they're not getting viewed. So today I'm going to tell you guys how my schizophrenia and addiction led to me becoming a felon and having to spend time in jail. I think it's really important for me to talk about my criminal record because when I do motivational speaking events, I specifically will talk about how schizophrenia, addiction, and incarceration have all played a role in my life, but also how they're all related. I started having symptoms when I was 19 years old. I was still in college, and for the most part, I was on my own. So when I started having symptoms, I didn't really know what to do. And I was delusional, I was hallucinating, I was paranoid. And for some reason I turned to drugs. I thought that self-medicating would be the only way that I could get the voices to stop. Obviously looking back I know that's not the case and I know it was a bad decision. But at the time I felt like it was all I had. And I've addressed my past of addiction a lot on TikTok and even here on YouTube. But I haven't really talked about how my addiction led to my criminal record. During my psychotic break I was working full time and trying to go to school full time as well. This started a downward spiral of me not sleeping and using drugs to stay awake. I tried to drive from where I was working to my mom's house. It's about an hour drive. And on my way home, I started falling asleep. I started dozing off, my eyes were closing, and I would wake myself back up. And this had happened a few times, and the next thing I knew, I was in the ditch, and I had hit another vehicle. Now, although I was actively using drugs during this time period, in this specific instance, I wasn't actively under the influence of any drugs. However, I was still charged with an OWI. The way it was explained to me by the judge and my lawyer, whether or not an illegal drug is active or non-active, when they take a blood test, it can still be considered an OWI, which is operating well intoxicated, or a DUI, which is driving under the influence. Even though my public defender was able to send in the blood and have it tested again, which proved there was illegal drugs in my system but not active at the time, I was still charged with OWI injury. Unfortunately, someone in that accident was harmed. I seriously injured someone and I needed to be held accountable. I have a lot of regrets looking back. The first and foremost was not going to see a psychiatrist and dealing with my schizophrenia and the other was not reaching out when my addiction started to take over. I did have to serve time in jail, and during my time in jail is actually when I identified that there was something wrong with me and I needed help. Because when I was in jail, I chose to get sober, and some people are going to be shocked to hear this. I would say it might be easier to get drugs inside of a jail or prison than on the outside. But during this time, I did get sober, and I didn't have any distractions. And so I was able to start identifying that there was something going on with me. The other people in my cell block would tell me I was talking to people who weren't there. And unfortunately, due to the lack of mental health care and health care in general, when it comes to our prison institution system, I wasn't able to get the help I needed while in jail. Fortunately, immediately when I got out, I sought the help I needed. One of the biggest issues I have with the United States prison system is that a majority of the people I met in there were not bad people. Most people there are mentally ill or struggling with addiction. A lot of people in jails or prisons across America would better benefit from mental health facilities or recovery clinics. And I'm not saying that because I think I need to go to either of those facilities. Once I got out, I decided to go back to school and that's when I started my nonprofit. For those of you who don't know, I founded a nonprofit called One Opportunity Hiring. It's a nonprofit that helps people with criminal records in my local area get back to work. Now, I did launch this nonprofit in the middle of COVID, so unfortunately, and I had to give up the office space for the nonprofit, but we still do operate online helping people in my local area get back to work. 
The main reason I made this video is because my life isn't a secret. A lot of people on the internet get exposed for things they've done in the past. My past is what built my social media following. Whether it was my mental illness, whether it was my felony, whether it was my addiction, those aspects of my life molded me into who I am and gave me the opportunity to speak to others, to motivate others, and just share my story with the general public. I don't want pity for my situation. Sometimes when I share my story on TikTok or YouTube, I think that's what people are assuming I'm trying to do. It's not. Yes, there were circumstances that led to my accident. But when it comes down to it, I was actively using drugs. And I should not have been driving in the mental state I was in. A lot of people who have accidents and DUIs and OWIs never get in an accident, never hurt anyone. And unfortunately, I did. And despite what was going on with me at that time, my actions led to someone getting hurt. Do I think addiction and schizophrenia played a role? Absolutely. But that's why I do motivational speaking now, so that people can better identify those symptoms in themselves and seek medical attention. Or if they're struggling with addiction, being able to reach out and let someone know. There was a long period of my life where if I would have got the help I needed, none of this would have happened. But it did, and it's something I have to deal with now. And I just want to remind everyone out there watching this, whether you are mentally ill, whether you are a felon, whether you are struggling with addiction, there is a way out. And you could have told me at any point during my life that that was the case, and I would not have believed you. Please remember to reach out if there's someone you can reach out to. If you are struggling with mental health or addiction issues, don't let it get so far that you also have to deal with the criminal justice system. Get the help you need before it becomes an issue. I appreciate you guys so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. I appreciate all of you who did sit through this entire video. Thank you guys so much. Everyone have a wonderful rest of your week. Thank you guys so much for helping me hit 40,000 followers. You guys take it easy, and I will see you soon.